All right, guys, welcome back to Swahili Nation. And without wasting time, I'm just gonna jump right away to do a reaction uh, for the second part of uh, Ethiopia then and now. All right, it's very important, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a reaction for that right now, right here. And I cannot wait to do that. All right, don't forget to subscribe, turn notification button, follow your bow on social media, Mika Chavala, Swahili Nation. It's gonna be amazing. All right, let's jump. Step too late. Egypt was taken by the British, the Maghreb was taken by France, and almost no free real estate was left in Africa, until the Italians found this place called Ethiopia. Rome, 1885. Mr. Prime Minister, this country of Ethiopia, how should we take it? <laughs> I'm gonna make him an offer. He can't refuse. In the Treaty of Wachale, the Italians pulled a sneaky little linguistic trick. While the treaty in Amharic stated that only Eritrea will become an Italian colony, the Italian version stated they want all of it. And that was not acceptable to Menelik, and both sides prepared for war. Armed with the most powerful so excited for this one. Italian pride, the modern Italian army made its way to the northern Ethiopian town of Adwa in 1896. Mm. And this was where the Ethiopians sealed their fame in history. The Italians underestimated Ethiopia's rough terrain, and the combined lack of supply routes and bad organization led to an Italian defeat. And unlike what the Italians had originally thought, this time the Ethiopians were armed with Russian and French guns. So it ain't as easy as the last time. This victory gave Ethiopia the international spotlight, since it became the only African nation to defeat a Ethiopia is a badass, I told you guys. Adwa became so significant that the Pan-African Independence Movement That's adopted true. the red, yellow, and green colors of Ethiopia's flag. And over 20 African countries today have the national flags inspired by Ethiopia's. Exactly. While Ethiopia successfully over 20 countries, man. It was still Even my country, because we have green color on One the flag. who eventually became the world's most famous Ethiopian, and who inspired a weed-smoking religion, was dead set on cashing up with the West. His name is Haile Selassie. Ah, uh, Haile Selassie. Of Ethiopia. This guy is very famous, guys. The Lion of Judah. Wow. That was Jesus right there. Born in Western Ethiopia in 1892, Haile Selassie was originally named Tafari Makanan. And since princes in Ethiopia were given the title of Ras, his title was Ras Tafari. And that was the brief etymology of the religion of reggae. Tafari was never supposed to be emperor, but was only a noble who had close connections with the royal family. But after the death of the great Menelik, his successor, mm -hmm. Yasu, turned out to be too friendly with Ethiopia's Muslim population, and the nobles did not like that. Since Tafari was married to the daughter of the previous emperor, the couple soon replaced the unpopular emperor. Educated by French missionaries and having traveled widely across Europe, Tafari was well known and respected in the West. And with the death of his wife in 1930, Tafari was crowned emperor of Ethiopia and given the new name of Haile Selassie, meaning the might of the Trinity. But just might five years Trinity. into his reign, the butthurt Italians decided to invade once again, oh, but this time on. with far superior technology. Forced into exile, Selassie toured around the world to seek support against the Italian occupation and gave a memorable speech in Geneva in 1936. Selassie's speech garnered him widespread mm. support and international sympathy for Ethiopia. With Italy's official entry into the Second World War, the British forces successfully pushed out the occupying Italians with the help of the Ethiopian resistance, mm. and Ethiopia was free once again. Mm. But with the war over and the Italians gone, Eritrea became disputed territory. Will it become part of Ethiopia again, or will it become an independent state? Mm. That question was answered in 1952. When the UN deemed Eritrea lacking in terms of national identity or sustaining economy, and Ethiopia and Eritrea entered into a federal union. Mm. Great job, UN. Great job. Mm -hmm. You never failed to make the best decisions. During the 1950s, Ethiopia's economy was growing under the leadership of Haile Selassie. 
there was even a process for the separation of powers, increased mm. human rights, and a gradual westernization of the country. Ethiopia. 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 Oh, how wonderful. So glad you could be here. <laughs> Thank you. Man, I've never done reaction this long. 27 minutes is crazy. But I'm loving this because it's like the summary of all the Ethiopian, I mean, Ethiopian history. And in December 1960, with the military failing to overthrow the emperor, Haile Selassie's regime was filled with paranoia. And that's when everything went south. Oh, a change in management. Since the failed coup, Haile Selassie became much more autocratic. The regime decreased the autonomy in Eritrea, effectively annexing the province. The government failed to address national issues such as a failing economy, and any voice of dissent was crushed by the military. Mm. The government became dominated by the aristocrats and hereditary landowners, returning Ethiopia to its feudal state. And Come those on. are only the internal problems. The neighboring nation of Somalia's growing ambitions to take the predominantly Somali Ogaden region of Ethiopia led to war. And the Eritrean independence movement began almost 30 years of nonstop violence. And combined with the Ethiopian government trying to cover up an ensuing famine, that proved to be the final straw for the ordinary people. In 1974, with the support of Marxist students, a military coup under the Derg, meaning council in the ancient Ge'ez language, mm. dethroned Haile Selassie and formed a communist state. While official communist records claim the former emperor died from natural causes in 1975, but most credible evidence points to his assassination by strangling under the Derg's orders. With the rise of communist drama in Mengistu Haile Mariam in 1977, the population was subjected to a year-long red terror, where possibly up to 750,000 of suspects against the regime were killed. But even with the support of its new Soviet ally, Ethiopia continued to suffer from its open wound of ethnic nationalism, uh -huh. which only got a hundred times worse. The Ethiopian government no longer just had to deal with its northern Eritrean rebels. The cruelty mm. of the communist regime triggered a domino effect ethnic rebellion. The Tigres, the Oromo, the Afar, the Somalis, the Sidama all wanted independence from this failing state. I These think this is really good. This history, common, but they all hated Mengistu. You guys have to watch because it kind of reminds you like where you guys you came from, you know what I'm saying? And this, this is what helps enough, to bring Ethiopia back compassion, with a devastating love and peace. Killing over a million. But it was precisely the famine of 83 that brought the world's attention to this unfortunate country once again. Through the famous Life Aid concert. As famous and popular as these performances have become, only parts of the raised funds were received by the famine victims. Since Ethiopia was in the midst of war and chaos, it's speculated that much of the money was diverted to rebel groups and the government. But hey, who knows where it all went. By 1991, the Tigray rebels coordinated attacks against the Dirk forces with fellow separatist forces and successfully took over the capital of Addis Ababa. Mengistu understood that his own army stood no chance against oh. this ever-growing rebellion. No, no, no. To his only ally. 1991. The believe this is the last Moscow. part. Is Moscow there? We need military support immediately. Oh, извините, я не говорю по амхарски. До свидания. This guy, this guy is, this guy is very talented, man. With the Soviet Union on the verge of falling apart, Mengistu lost its only support and fled to Zimbabwe, where he remains to this very day. But even with Mengistu and the communists gone, Ethiopia was still fractured. The rebel groups had little in common. Different organizations supporting a diverse range of ethnic groups all wanted their own chunk of land. The nation was in dire straits, but the leader of the rebel coalition had a plan. Though fragile, it might just keep the country from breaking Ethiopia apart. TV. A brand new and stable republic. Put yourself in the shoes of an African general. Your country has just emerged out of a 30-year-long civil war. Your economy consists of nothing more than coffee bean exports and scorched wasteland. You have dozens of rebel groups advocating for independence, and the world basically sees your nation as a lost cause. What would you do? And if you were in that position? If you know exactly what to do, you might just be Mela Zanawi, the leader of the Tigray People's Liberation Front. For years, Zanawi fought against the Derg, 
and he understood the ethnic tension in the country well. In order to secure peace in this nation, Zanawi proposed a solution known as ethnic federalism, where Ethiopia will now be divided by regions of heterogeneous ethnic groups such as the Amhara region, the Tigray region, the Oromo region, and a few more others. Zanawi's new party, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, damn, that Oh, that's a mouthful, made some progress in improving the nation's infrastructure as well as restoring some semblance of a functioning economy. But Eritrea's independence in 1991, as well as the arrival of another famine, stalled the new government's plans. The EPRDF was of no democratic nature either. While promising equal representation for the different ethnicities of Ethiopia, oh, it marginalized the majority Oromo and Empower peoples, causing the Oromo political parties to reject the new government and starting their own insurgency against the state. For years and years, the EPRDF was hindered in its every move by opposing ethnic political parties, and the government became more and more authoritarian as time went on. Censorship of the press became the norm. Hostile relations between ethnicities prevented a healthy civil culture and economic growth, and Ethiopia was trapped in a state of poverty with its never-ending conflict with Eritrea. But the country was finally able to get a breath of fresh air in 2018, with the election of new Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, mm. the first Oromo with this position. Ethiopia might just find peace with the Oromo Rebellion. Ahmed successfully restored relations with the Eritreans and ended a decades-long conflict. And under his leadership, Ethiopia's controversial Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam was near completion. The Grand Renaissance Dam is supposed to provide hydroelectric energy for a nation suffering from severe lack of electricity, and it is estimated to supply power for the neighboring nation of Sudan as well. This project could transform Ethiopia from a standard third world nation into a regional power, combined with a whopping population of 109 million. This is what is a. I wrote guys an article about this, about Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. Nothing in life is ever that easy. Due to the fear of water shortage from the Upper Nile, the Egyptian government firmly opposes the dam. So how this conflict will turn out, we still can't really tell. One thing for sure is that Ethiopia is doing everything it could to put itself in the forefront of world politics again, moving away from its famine and war-ridden past to mm. embrace a future with stronger African influence. Perhaps no other nation on earth understands ethnic tension or religious conflict as much as Ethiopia. But this country always seems to find just the right balance for it. In the past, yeah. Ethiopia led its fellow African nations in the dream of independence. But in the Tanzania is right there. This nation might just lead its continent to an era of African superpowers. Yes. Dang. This guy. This guy, man. He said, in the past, Ethiopia led a lot of African countries for all of you who made it to independence. Me, not only do I really appreciate it, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithm. Personally, I had a lot of fun researching Ethiopia's history, and I genuinely hope that you might have a growing interest in this country as well. So, once again, don't forget to comment down below what country, starting with the letter F, you'd like to see next, and I'll see you all next time. I like this guy how he finished. He said in the past Ethiopia led a lot of African countries to the independence and he said in the future it's gonna be a leading superpower pretty much. So shout out to that man finger crossed to that and I hope man all these things really come to pass because Ethiopia man is one of my favorite countries and I wish all the best man. I, I just I just hope that all these regions we have it's good to have tribes, it's good to have different languages, it's good to have all this because this is kind of like our identity. But I hope uh, at the end of the day, uh, all of us will go back to see our history, to see where we come from, all right? Because we have been, uh, in the case of Ethiopia, it, it shows that they have been through a lot in the past, but they always come back strong, even right now at this very moment, because you guys are one, all right? Because Africa is one. And we can get through even this situation right now, what is going on. Let's just remember to love one another and spread peace and love and unity wherever we go, man. That's what actually going to save us and keeping God first. Because Ethiopia definitely is the real, it's, it's a religious country. You know, there's Orthodox, there's Christianity, there's a, um, um, what is this, Islamic, there's a, 
um, ju- ju- uh, Judaism, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just hope that, you know, we just keep hoping and keep praying for that. And I know God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Anyway, shout out to Ethiopia and I appreciate for History City. Man, I really hope you allow me to do reaction on this. I already done reaction anyways, but I'm going to send you email and see uh, if you will allow me still. Uh, guys, I really appreciate for stopping by and please just, you know, if you can go and comment to this video, tell them that, hey, please allow Shail Nation to react on this video, please. You know what I'm saying? It will help somehow. Appreciate guys. Until next time, Swahili Nation, Swahili to the world. I will comment in this video. You guys, you can go, you can comment on my comment and that would be amazing. I know he might allow it anyways, but yeah, I'm out of here, guys. Don't forget love one another and spread peace, whatever you are. Swahili Nation, Swahili to the world. And thank you, History City, for really, really, really preparing this video. It cannot be easy. It's not easy. It's a lot of work. You know, as a YouTuber looking at this video, a lot of work into this video. This guy, he put a lot of work. Anyways. Thank you.